Amen. 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 Okay, well, we are going to look at John chapter 14. So if you have your Bible, uh, turn to John 14. I mentioned this a little bit earlier when we were praying about our church situation and uh, needing to find another building. God knew that I would preach this message on this day, and this is what we would need for this day. Uh, because of how this, this verse starts out, um, so turn to John 14, and uh, no, go ahead and go to the, there you go, to the scriptures. Okay. So John 14, 1, Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. So this first line, this is for us today. Yes. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Yes. So what does the word troubled mean? It means we say more no, in problem <laughs> come. Yes. We will not going to be in the peace and we are in, uh, how can I see? Our mind is going and we be thinking what is going to be happen inside. We have a trouble in our heart. Yes, yes. So it's like uh, sometimes used with like the water in the sea, the waves are, are troubled, they're up and down, and they're all over the place. So our emotions, our, our thoughts, are, uh, we're, we have peace, then we don't have peace, and we're up and down like the waves. Yeah. So Jesus is telling us, mm. calm, be at peace, don't be troubled. Okay, now... If we, we have to go back and remember what had just happened in the last chapter because this is what's interesting to me. Jesus is, is going to die the next morning after he says this. And he's comforting the disciples when he's the one that's going to die for our sins. Nothing's going to happen to them. Uh, he's the one that's going to suffer. He's going to take our sins and be separated from his father and take our shame when he when he dies. But he's comforting them, yes. which is amazing to think about that, that God loves us. And he he not only was willing to take our our sins and our death, but he's also he, he's our comforter, the one who gives us peace. And we have to remember that he had just told Peter, Peter said, Lord, I will die for you. Yes. And Jesus says, nah, <laughs> no, you won't. In fact, you're going to say three times before you hear the roast, rooster crow in the morning, three times before the morning, you're going to deny that you even know me. Okay. And so, of course, I'm sure when Peter heard that, he, he was troubled. His heart was like, oh, no, what's happening? And I mentioned last week that it's not in the book of John, but if you read it, I, be I believe it's the book of Luke. It says Jesus went on and told him, the devil, Satan, has asked that he might sift you like wheat. And I talked about how, you know, when you have wheat and you, you put it in like a, a box with holes in the bottom and you're shaking it, you're, all the bad stuff is falling out to the bottom. Right? And then the wheat, what is good yes. is what's left. Yes. Also, yes. Right. So Jesus was telling uh, Peter, this is what's happening to you inside. The devil is going gonna, is gonna to tempt you and you're going to even deny me. But it, it's going to get all the bad. Mm -hmm. And God does this in us. He, he has to cut away the, the things in our lives that are not good. And we'll see this in the next chapter, John 15. Jesus will talk about a tree that grows fruit has to be pruned. It has to be cut. Like this time of the year is actually a good time to, to prune and cut back trees in the winter time. So that in the spring, then, then the branches, if you cut a branch, then two more branches will grow up, two or three mm -hmm. or more will grow off that one, and then more fruit will come yes. if you prune it. And so 
We'll look at that in John 15, how Jesus has to cut away the bad in our lives so that good things will come. And so Peter, that's what was happening to him. He, he was actually testing his faith, seeing, uh, what are you going to do with me when times get hard? And this is a lesson for us today, you know. I mean, we're not going through uh, physical persecution right now. We're not being beaten. We're not being kicked out of this church and sent to prison. Mm -hmm. You know, many of you, your countries, this happens, right? Yes. Um, I, mean, I, now we I just watched a, 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 a little news clip thing in, in India again. Uh, another church, like the people got thrown out, the, the pastors were beaten severely, so... You know, we praise God. We're being told we, we have to leave this building. but So that is a form of persecution, but, but we still have a lot of freedom. Yeah. So what are we going to do with this? Are we going to let God use it in our life to test us and see? Are we going to trust Him to provide a place for us? Are we going to trust Him? So Peter... <laughs> <laughs> she she wants to talk too. Yes. That's okay at she least. She says trust Jesus. Trust oh, Jesus, yeah. right? At least. Okay, so we're going to get into John 14. So just keep in your mind that he just told Peter. They're all sitting around the table partaking of the Lord's Supper, which we're going to do today, or communion. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, where Jesus actually tells them, take this bread. It's my body, which will be broken for you on the cross. And my blood, receive this wine or the juice that represents the blood that Jesus will, will, will shed, will spill out his perfect blood to clean us from our sins. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're having a, their hearts are troubled. He's, he's told Peter, you're not going to die for me uh, at this point. Peter did die for him later. Okay, but at this point, he's also telling them, I'm going away from you. And they're like, where are you going? So we're going to see that again here. He's going to say that as well. So let's continue to read in John 14. And uh, we'll read through verse 3. Okay? He says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, would I have not told you that I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take, take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So we're going to spend a few minutes on these three verses. These three verses are very important as Christians for us to understand what they mean. Okay, so now we'll go to the next. So I, I put this chart here. They kind of cut the end off, but here, this is an arrow coming down. Okay, so whenever you read the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, it's all prophecy about the Messiah, the Savior, who would come and set up a kingdom. Okay, so what I've shown you here is actually once Jesus came, he started revealing that there's the his first coming and a second coming, that he will come again. Okay, but when when people read the Old Testament, when they heard the, the, the Savior, the Messiah, was coming, they thought it was just at one time he would come, he would destroy the whoever was ruling the world, the, su the superpower, and he would set up his kingdom on the earth. So that's what they thought. And it would all be at the same time. They did not understand that he must die. They did not understand that he would rise again. And they did not understand um, that, that, he, that he would go away back to his father and then come back again. Okay, so Jesus is going to reveal to his disciples that he's getting ready to go away. Okay, and they're thinking, what do you where are you going? You're supposed to set up a kingdom. You're the king. You're supposed to set up a kingdom and we're going to live with you forever in this kingdom. Okay? So, Jesus' first coming is all of this until this point right here. Okay? 
And then he tells us he's going to go away to his father and then he's going to come back again. And that's what we're reading right now. We're reading about this right here. Where when Jesus left this earth, he promised, I'm going to come again. And I'm going to receive you to myself. Where And where I am, you will be also. That's what we just read. Okay, so we're looking at, we're, we're, we're in what's called the church age. We're living in this, we're in the middle here in this time period. Okay, so it's important we understand that in order for us to get to be where Jesus is, heaven, all of this had to happen. His first coming. He had to be... Jesus was tested to prove whether he is the Son of God. He was tested to prove if he was perfectly righteous, if his blood was perfect. Because if Jesus would have sinned even one time in his life, he would not have perfect blood, right? The spiritual Lamb of God who had to be without spots or blemish, no broken bones. It was a symbol in the Old Testament of the Lamb that they made a sacrifice. That was a symbol of Jesus who had perfect righteousness. He, he was perfectly honorable to His Father all the time. So His life on this earth before the cross was a testing of Jesus, proving who He is. So he had th 33 years of, of, of testing, of being tempted by the devil mm -hmm. to sin. Okay, in, in the book of Hebrews, it says, in every way, Jesus was tempted like we are. So when you get thoughts to do something against God, against his commands, Jesus had those thoughts, but he didn't give in to them. I mean, he had the temptation. Okay? I don't know if you remember last week I talked about uh, Judas did not just, the devil didn't just come take over him and he just did whatever the devil wanted. He, he came to a place where his heart was hard. He rejected Jesus. Okay? And he gave in to the temptation and he did what the devil put into his mind. And we do need to understand the difference because the devil will put things in your mind that are wrong and then you can choose whether you're going to do it or not, right? And you're going to choose sometimes there's sin that's in the mind. Like the Bible talks about lust. Uh, sexual sin after another person, that's, that's in the mind. That if That's sin even if you don't do anything with your body. Okay, so getting back to what I'm saying here, Jesus had 33 years of proving that he's the sinless son of God. Perfect. Without spots in his heart, he had, he had a perfectly clean heart all the time. And he died on the cross and was treated as if he did have sins. He was treated as if his heart was not clean. Okay? And so, because that's what we deserve to get. And Jesus took what we deserve. He substituted himself at the cross. And so he's starting to reveal these things to his disciples. He had told them, I must die and rise again. And his disciples, it says, he did, they did not believe it. They did not understand what he was saying. They did not believe it until after he rose. Okay, so then we know he died on the cross. Three days later, so he, he, he died and, and took death for us. Okay? Three days later, he rose again from the dead. And the Bible says he lived for a, around 40 more days on the earth. And then he went back to heaven. So when we read John 14, we're reading about the second coming of Jesus. Notice he says, uh, first he's comforting them, showing them, that there's more than just this life on earth. Right, Elise? There's more than just this life on earth. <laughs> she said, Amen. Amen. Okay? So, that there is a place that God is preparing for every one of you. Look, he says, 
Uh, believe in God, believe in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Okay, now, I don't think that Jesus is saying that God actually lives in a, in a house like this, and there's lots of rooms. Okay, what do you think he's talking about? Kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven, right? Where, where God is, is where heaven is. So right now, heaven is in a, it's a spiritual place. We don't know, and we cannot get there by an airplane. It's a spiritual place that through Jesus, we get to go to this place, okay? But then heaven, heaven will move its locations, okay? It will move from wherever it is now to the earth at some point. And then the Bible says he will make a new heaven and a new earth. That, that we will live in forever. So when Jesus returns the second time, it will be, he will have a kingdom on this earth and will rule and reign. And then there will be a new earth and heaven will be on that earth and that's where we live forever. Okay, so when he says, in my father's house, there are many rooms or some translations say many living places, places to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, now... Usually, a, a bedroom, we use the bedroom to sleep, right? Yes. I don't think we'll be sleeping in heaven. No, no. We won't have perfect bodies, okay? Um, some people, I was listening to a pastor preach on this this week, and he said he believes that this is talking about our new body. Uh, in, in, in heaven, in God's home, the place where God dwells and His presence lives, Okay? That he's preparing many living places, so like a new body for us. And that could be true. But we know that no matter where God is in heaven, he's preparing something for us that we cannot even imagine. That is amazing and great. Much better than any place we could live on this earth. Okay, so that's what he's saying. That he's preparing a place for you and for me. Okay, now, I don't know for sure, but I was thinking about this. I've thought about this over many years now. But how many days did God take to create this earth? Seven. Seven. Yeah, so six days and then he rested on the seventh yeah. day, right? So all that is made only took six days. Yeah. Okay, Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then I'll come back again and take you. Well, it's been 2,000 years since Jesus left. And he's been preparing a place for a long time. Can you imagine what it might look like? Oh, my God. I mean, it's hard to imagine. It. Okay? And we know ultimately the, the heaven, the best thing about heaven is not the beauty of it or the things that are there. But it's that God dwells and lives with his people. That's the best part about heaven. If, if I lived in a box, in a square wooden box, but God, His full glory and presence came in that box with me, that would be heaven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? See, so sometimes we think about, if, if, there were, if heaven were it is now, the streets of gold, and it talks about the, the pearly gates and all of that, where we will be at, uh, you know, when we die. If God were to remove himself from that place, it wouldn't be heaven anymore, yes. even though it's beautiful, okay? So that's what we need to understand. Where God lives and dwells and his presence rules and reigns is heaven. That's why Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is near you. Because, see, when you put your faith in Jesus, the spirit of God's presence comes and lives in you. Okay, and so in a, in a spiritual sense, we are already in this kingdom. Okay, but, it, but there's, so there's a kingdom now that we are a part of, but then there's a kingdom that we're not yet part of. It's, it's hard to understand that we are, if you trust Jesus, he is the Lord. Okay, and he's Lord of our hearts and our lives, and we are in this kingdom but also we're waiting for something that he's talking about here that's coming. That, that 
should comfort our hearts no matter what you're going through. God is preparing some, a place for you. And listen, you're not going to have to go clean it up. Right now you work very hard cleaning other people's nice houses, right? Okay, now I don't, maybe we'll clean. I doubt there will be dirt. I don't know. Maybe there's dirt in heaven. I'm sure there's grass and things. Maybe we will clean, but we will love it. We will love it, right? Whatever we're doing there, you have a place for you that God has prepared for you. And that is preparing for you. Okay, so this is a promise to comfort our hearts. No matter what you're going through, you have a home in heaven with Jesus. If you're trusting Jesus, there is an afterlife. I know some of you um, in your countries, you know, the religion teaches that you that there's not an eternal afterlife. It's just depending on the religion, right? Hinduism, reincarnation. Just coming back and then eventually the just teach about the eternal life. Yeah, it's just you want to ban it. You want to have peace, like your soul just like peace. No, heaven is not just like sleeping all the time. It's a place where we have a body and we have a, a mind and a spirit, and there's walls there to touch and feel. It's heaven is more real than than earth is now. There's a really good pastor named. Uh, uh, Ravi Zacharias, he, he's from India. Do any of you know Ravi Zacharias? I know. Very good Christian man. He lives in the United States, but he's from India. He was Hindu. He came to believe in Jesus, and he travels all over the world. He's an evangelist, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he helps people understand like Christianity better. Um, but he said in one of his books that I read, think about a baby that's in the mother's womb. So Elise, when she was in her mom's womb, her the, the belly, all she knew was what her world was inside the womb. Mm -hmm. She never had seen yeah. this world. Yeah. She couldn't even open her eyes. All she, everything was dark for her. Yeah. But her place where she lived for nine months, yeah. mm -hmm. it was comfortable. Yes. She was, she she had food. She was probably warm in there. Were you warm in there? <laughs> she was comfortable. Okay? But then, when it came time for her to, to be born into this world, how much more is there than, than, than she ever knew? Think about, she can see. I mean, the colors that she can see. She can, she can look at our faces. Now, before she came into this world, she could hear my voice. Mm -hmm. So she knew me as her father. In fact, it was pretty neat. The day she was born, yeah, and then, do you remember yeah. this? Do you remember yeah. this? Yeah. Do you remember this? <laughs> the day she was born. She's thinking she's trying to do me. <laughs> you think I'm talking to you? Yeah. 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 So Liz had to have the, the surgery, the C-section. So she was laying, laying down. <laughs> oh, yeah. so you she's sharing her testimony right now. Yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> you want daddy to hold you? You want daddy to hold you? <laughs> she wants me to hold you. <laughs> you can preach the sermon with me. <laughs> she will she will speak to you. Okay? Now he's happy. Now you happy? So the day she was born, Liz had to have the, the C section where they, you know, do the surgery. So she could not get up. She's laying there yeah. in surgery. So as soon as they, they brought Elise out of her, her belly, they put her on this table and then they took her in another room, and of course they were kind of cleaning Clean, her. Yeah. Well, she was crying, of course, very bad. Mm -hmm. She did not know what was happening, you know, where's my mom? Mm -hmm. She was in her world. And then she was taken out, but it, should, it was neat because I went over to her on the table, she was laying down on the table, and she had not opened her eyes yet, and I, I leaned down like this, and I was like, Elise, it's your daddy. It's your daddy. And it was really cute because she she was opening her eyes. She was like, <laughs> and, then, and, and as I was speaking to her, 
She opened her eyes and then she gave me this look like, I know you. I know that I know this voice. So she saw me for the first time. Okay? And the nurses said and she stopped crying for, for just maybe five seconds. And then she started crying again. Okay, but when she heard my voice, she was like <laughs> See? So think about God. We we as his children, we hear his voice through his spirit. We hear his voice through his word. When we go to heaven one day, it's going to be like a bird. It's going to be like our eyes are going to be open to a whole new world. That is much better. Just like her in the womb. That was that was nothing compared to the world that she gets to experience. Now, this world, there's, there's sin and there's sickness and there's death and a lot of bad things. But heaven, there's nothing bad. It's perfect. So Jesus tells us, my sister, God bless you. Have a good week, okay? He's comforting us, saying, hey, you're sad, you're troubled, your hearts are troubled. This is what you get to look forward to. I'm going... Go back to the picture, Bella. Okay. I'm going... I'm going to prepare a place. He's pre this is where we're living right now. Jesus is in heaven. And we're going to see in a few verses, he's going to tell them, it's actually good that I go away because then I'm going to send my, my spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be with you and to be in you. Okay? Jesus is preparing a place, and when it's his time, he will come back again, and he says, I will receive you to myself. Okay? Now, this is talking about the second coming, and it's called the resurrection of the saints, of believers. So even when our body dies, our, our body dies and gets buried, okay? And our spirit goes on and lives with, with God in heaven. But when Jesus returns, our body will rise, just like Jesus did, well, in a new body, a glorified body. And, and then we will live in that new body forever. Okay, so when Jesus returns and says, I will receive you to myself, he's meaning he will receive us completely new and whole in our new bodies. So this should comfort your heart that Jesus promises heaven to those who trust him. He promises he's going to come back and take us to be where he is. But in order for us to be where he is, this has to happen. Which is what we're reading about now. So the next several weeks as we go through John, it's all the night before the cross, when Jesus dies on the cross, when he rises from the dead, to make a way for us to be with him in this new place. Okay? What's she doing? Is she looking at you? Thinking? Or the sleeping now. <laughs> you probably fall asleep. Okay. Pastor, I want to ask about this heaven. Kingdom of heaven and okay. the paradise. It's two places meaning of because the Jesus was in the crucified, the other two came there in the right hand and the left hand. The Jesus said to one of him, Tonight you will stay with me in paradise. So what's the meaning of heaven? Okay, that's a very good question. Now there are different pastors who who it's the Bible is not very clear about this, but there are some verses that give us an idea. Okay, I'll tell you what I believe, um, but I'm not 100% sure, but just how I see it in the Bible. So Jesus did tell that man, um, today, when he was on the cross, and the thief that repented, that said, Jesus, remember me when you go into your kingdom, into paradise, Jesus said, today, today, you will be with me in paradise. Okay, so... We know Jesus died, okay? And Jesus says um, in other passages, it says that he was in the heart of the earth. Well, the heart of something is the center, right? So in the heart of the earth, okay? When uh, he rose from the dead and Mary uh, grabbed onto him, and he said, do not hold on to me, for I have not gone to my Father. Okay, so... Um, there's another passage about two people who died, a story that Jesus told about 
a rich man who was not a follower of, of Jesus, and Jesus says he died and went to hell, okay, into Hades, in the middle of the earth. And Jesus, uh, and there was another man named Lazarus who was a godly man, follower of Jesus, and he went in, they called it to, to a where Abraham lives, okay? So many Christian uh, pastors and people that study the Bible believe before Jesus died and rose, there was a place in the middle of the earth called paradise, which could be seen from hell. It was oh, somehow they were able to see because the rich man in hell yells out uh, to, to Abraham, please give me a drop of water. I'm in such pain from the, yeah. the flame of hell. Yeah. And what did Abraham tell him? He said, no, oh. I cannot come to you. You cannot come to me. Um, it's, yeah. it's fixed. Oh. Okay. So um, in my opinion, and I may, maybe I'm wrong, I don't, because the Bible's not really clear. Jesus doesn't say, like, you know, there's a place in the earth here, and then, but it, from my understanding is at that time, there was a, a, like a holding place for the believers of Jesus, a good place of paradise, mm -hmm. where, where those who loved and trusted God lived. So Abraham, Moses, you know, all the Old Testament saints, okay? This is what many, when you, if you go to Bible college, this is what many teach, and then some have different views, okay? This is what I believe. So when he went, uh, Jesus went into the grave, that he obviously went to paradise. He told the, uh, the thief, today you will be with me in this place. Okay, now some people believe that Jesus also went into hell. Uh, because it does say in, in uh, it's first or second Peter that he preached to the to the to the um, to those who were held there. Okay, so I don't want to get too too sidetracked on this, but we do know when Jesus died, he took our sins and was treated as though he had sins. And he was he was dead. His body was dead, and his spirit left him, and he went to whether it was the, I, I guess it was the middle of the earth, his spirit. And then when he rose from the dead and came back in his new body, his, you know, his resurrected body, then when he left, he went to the Father in, in heaven. Now, many people ask, well, what happened to all these people who were here? So many believe that when Jesus went to the Father, or I'm sorry, when he rose, that these people just were taken into heaven at that time. Now the Bible doesn't specifically say that, so that's why we can't say exactly how it happened. Um, and it does, it does not matter, because now paradise and heaven are the same. So when we believe in Jesus and we trust Jesus, when our body dies, our spirit goes to paradise and to heaven with God. Okay, then when Jesus returns, our body will rise just like Jesus' body rose, and our spirit and our body will, will come together in a, in a, but it will be a new body. You know, it's not gonna be like bones and, uh, if you have sickness right now, you're not gonna rise with the same sickness or probably scars that you have, or, you know, she's not going to rise with a heart problem. She has, you know, her heart, a hole, not a hole, but a, her valve is, doesn't open correctly. She's not going to have a new body with that heart problem. She's going to have a new heart. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <really> good. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's keep reading because we want to continue seeing what, what Jesus says. Okay, I did want to spend some time. So Jesus is comforting us. I'm going to go away, but I'm going to come back again one day. And this could be any day. Jesus could return today. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, okay, those who have died in Christ, who believed in Jesus, when he returns, it says the dead in Christ will rise first. So like, those of you who your grandparents who believed in Jesus or people who have gone on before you, 
their bodies will rise first. And then it says, those of us who are alive and remain on this earth at the coming of the Lord will be caught up in the clouds and we will meet the Lord in the air. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, at that point, if we're alive when Jesus returns, we will be transformed into our new bodies. So if Jesus returned today, and you are following Jesus and trusting in Him, we will be caught up and meet, meet Him in the clouds and just be transformed into our new body. <laughs> okay? She's sucking on her fingers. All right, let's keep moving on because I know we're, I don't want to go too long today. Okay, so look at verse 4. Jesus says, And you know the way where I am going. So He's talking about heaven. And they're confused. Jesus, what? why are you going away? You're supposed to set up a kingdom on this earth. So, verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So, how do we know the way? So, they think he's talking about moving to another land, or another country, or another town, or he's going somewhere else. Uh, we don't know. What are you talking about? We don't know how to get there. And then, Jesus quotes this verse. Jesus said to, to him, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what he's saying is, he's going to the place where God the Father dwells and lives in heaven. Okay? So, this verse, no, go back. This verse is a very, very important verse to understand this truth that Jesus says. Okay? This sets Jesus, this sets Christianity apart from many, many religions. Okay? I talk to people who are of other religions, but they say, all of us, if you're good, if you're a good person, we'll all get to heaven our own way. I, there was a... a, a, a a lady and her son, when I was in Nepal, when I was in Pokhara, I was, they, were, they had a store that they sold idols. All the little idols. They had like even a little thing of Buddha. You know, the statue of Buddha, the idol, uh, or Buddha that started Buddhism. They had the little idol, and they had all these idols that you bow and you pray to. So the son... They were actually from, uh, he was a refugee, him and his mom, from Tibet. And they, and they moved into Nepal because there was a place that, that had for refugees from Tibet. Um, so anyways, he was standing on the street and he was passing out the Buddhist flags. The, you know, the yellow and the red and the different color, the flags. And, and he passed, and it was Pastor Joshua was with me. He gave Pastor Joshua this flag, and he said, uh, peace to you, or something like that. Uh, have peace, uh, seek peace, pray, pray, put your prayers on this flag, or something like that. So I heard him say this, so I decided, I'm going to go in and talk to him. And so I said, listen, you know, you gave us this flag, and you said, peace, you know, we're all searching for peace, may you find peace, something like that. And I said, you know, peace is only in Jesus. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. I, I can put my prayers on this little flag and hang it up to, to some false gods, and they're, they're not going to give you peace. They're not going to help me. Okay? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Because they, in your country, you yeah, see them yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Right? I, I even see them here in Cyprus around up on, on some, some uh, rooftop sometimes. Okay, so anyways... I talk, so I started sharing the gospel with them, and I said, listen, you know, Jesus is the only one that can give us peace, because we have to have peace with God before we can have peace with ourselves and others, okay? And so I told him, Jesus came, and he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead to, to, to bring peace. Well, his mother was standing close by, and she was cleaning the idols. She was wiping them, you know? And she was listening to me the whole time. 
Well, then she started getting kind of mad at me because I kept talking. And all the people, you know, she's trying to sell the idols, and I'm in there, like, talking about Jesus. And how I said, these idols don't do anything for you. They won't help you. And she was like, you know, I'm I'm ruining her sales. She's not going to be able to make very much money off these idols. Okay, so she says, oh, 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 we believe in all religions. All religions lead to God. Just be religious, be good, be a good person, and you can, and we will all go to God. And that's where I just told her, well, I believe what the Bible teaches, and this is what Jesus says. Look at verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one. Okay? So, there's no other way. Jesus, this is what Jesus is saying. There is no other way to the Father in heaven except through Jesus. That's what Jesus says. Okay? So, as Christians, it's important we understand that Jesus is claiming to be the only way. It's called the narrow way. Narrow means small. So if you have a door, like this doorway is in, goes into that room, it's the way in. If we have a, a narrow door, it means it's very, very small. Okay? And Jesus said, uh, in one of the other Gospels, he said, wide is the gate or the door that leads to destruction, to death. And there are many going this way. And he said, but narrow is the way, small is the door to the way of life. And he said, there are very few who will find it. So Jesus is saying, most people are going their own way. They're following false gods. They're following other religions. But Jesus said, I am the way. And he said, and that way is narrow. And there are very few who will actually go the way of Jesus. So it's important we understand that Jesus claimed to be the only, our only hope of heaven. If there were another way to get to heaven, do you think Jesus would have come down and died on that cross for us? He would have just said, go, go that way. But he knew there was no other way for us to get to him. And that's, that's why he, it was through the cross. Because only perfect... Righteous blood can cleanse us from our sins. It's the only thing that has power. Only Jesus' perfect blood has the power. Right? So, Jesus claimed he's the only way. Okay, let's keep reading. I think I put my son to sleep. Is she sleeping now? No, she is never awakened. (laughs) She's preaching. She's like, preach it. Jesus is the way. Amen. <laughs> okay. Verse 7. Uh, Jesus says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it, it is enough for us. Okay, so many times when people refer to God, they think of God the Father, okay? But we know in Christianity, uh, the Bible teaches that God is one God, but in Father, Son, who is Jesus, and Holy Spirit. All God in three different persons, okay? So Jesus says, uh, if if you've seen me, you've seen the Father because... I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. You want to know who God is? Look at Jesus. He's the human form of God. Okay? So Philip is confused. He's like, show us the Father. Okay? And Jesus said in verse 9, Have I not been with you so long, and you still do not know me? So Philip saying, show us what God is like, the Father. And Jesus says, hey, I've been with you. Do you, do you not know me that I, that I am God? In the flesh, okay? He says, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? 
So Jesus is revealing again, this is a claim of, it's called a claim of deity or claim to be God. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, it's that phrase that I've talked to you about in, in John, eho ime, in Greek, right? I am. So Jesus made seven statements where he says, I am, eho ime, and then he says he is something. And every statement is a claim to be God in the flesh. He says, in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. In John 8, 12, I am the light. In John 10, 9, I am the door, or I am the gate. In John 10, 11, which is Elijah's favorite Bible verse, he says, I am the good, the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then in uh, John uh, 11, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And now here in, in chapter 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And then his last statement, he'll say, we'll see in the next chapter, he says, I am the vine. Okay, so Jesus is claiming something that, that you can talk to a lot of people about God, just like God in general. And do you believe in God? Yes. And they have their own version of who God is. But then when you start talking about Jesus, that's where many people get offended, right? You've probably had this happen when you share Jesus, and Jesus claimed to be the only way. You getting tired, baby? <laughs> okay? So now he's telling his disciples, you want to know God? Get to know me. Because I'm in, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. And that's why he's kind of rebuking Philip. He's saying, you're, set, you're asking, show us the Father? How long have I been with you? I, I'm showing you who, who God is. Because the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one God in, in three. It's hard for our minds to understand. But Jesus, if we want to know God, then we have to know Jesus. And that's why it said in John 14, 1, believe in God, believe in me. Okay? So, let's continue quickly. Uh, verse 10, it says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. So what Jesus is saying is, you know, if a, if a, a person comes to you and says, I'm God, <laughs> you should be like, um, well, do something to show us that you have power. I mean, God is above all things and all-powerful, so if you're God, then prove it. Show us. And what has Jesus been doing for the last three years up until this point? He's been revealing his, who he is, yeah. right? He's, he just raised Lazarus from the dead. He turned water into wine. He healed the blind. He healed the sick, okay? So he's saying, look at the things that I do which prove who I am. Okay? Alright, let's continue. Uh, verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me also, wait, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this today because next week that's what we're focusing on. That Jesus is going to start teaching them about the Holy Spirit. He's actually going to teach them, it's better for me to go away and I will send my Spirit who will live in all of you wherever you go because I'm going back to the Father. He's... he's He's getting ready to tell them about the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, 
Jesus is has a body like you and I. Okay, so he's the human form of God, a person. So it's through Jesus' Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that he dwells everywhere. So Jesus is telling them, I'm going to the Father, me, physically, as a person. I can't be with all of you all at the same time in my body. So I'm going to go back to the Father, and I'm going to send my Spirit, and then He's going to give you power from the Holy Spirit to do greater things. Okay? Now Jesus is not saying you're going to do better miracles than He did. Okay, what He's meaning is, think about it. If, if you are in, say, Nepal or India or Sri Lanka, and I'm in America, and you have God's Spirit in Nepal and Sri Lanka and India, and I have God's Spirit in America, and we're doing God's work, His work is being done all over the world through us, greater in, in quantity, like more is being done for the kingdom of God because it's being done through his people which are everywhere in the world. Okay? So Jesus, his ministry in his body was limited to where he was at. Right? So, I mean, Jesus could have spoken and healed anyone from anywhere, but he was limited in his body where he would walk. So he would heal this person and this person and this person and proclaim his kingdom you know, wherever he went from town to town. He's telling them, I'm going to go to my Father, and I'm going to send you the Spirit, and wherever you go, he's going to go. So all of us, at some point, we're going to not be together. But God's Spirit will be in us, so wherever we're going, God is going to those places. Mm -hmm. So God's work, when he says, greater works, will you do... Because I'm going to my Father, he's actually talking about through the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about us. We, we're not good apart from God. We can do nothing. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's work is going forth even greater than Jesus' physical body on the earth, you know, just walking around. Because, uh, because he was limited in his body as far as his location. Does that make sense? So when... When Jesus went back to the Father, he said, wait for my spirit to come. And you, those of you who know the book of Acts, chapter 2, they waited and they prayed and they waited and then the spirit came, right? Because Jesus went to the Father, right? And all of us who trust Jesus, we have his spirit and we need God's spirit to work through us. So every believer that lives on this earth if you're a follower of Jesus, you, you have God's Spirit. And so that's what Jesus is saying. Greater works. Can you imagine what is going on uh, all over the world right now because Jesus sent His Spirit? Okay, so we're going to get into that more next week because that's what Jesus is going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Okay? At this point, they did not know a lot about the Holy Spirit. Um, and up until Jesus sent the Spirit at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit did not live in God's people permanently. It, he would come and he would leave. So like David, if you, you in First and Second Samuel and First and Second Chronicles, when you read about David, it talks about the Spirit of God came upon him and would do he would do something. Even it says Saul who was not a true follower of God, the Spirit came upon him, not in him, upon him to do something, and then it, it, the Spirit would leave. Okay? But now, through Jesus' death and resurrection, and through faith in Jesus, we receive the Spirit that lives in us. He doesn't just... Now, there are times where God's power... Uh, he fills us and he, his power is, is displayed more. But it's not that you got more of the Holy Spirit. You, I mean, it's like his power is showing more. But when you receive Jesus, you receive the Spirit. And then there is the filling where God fills us and he takes control. Okay, so we can talk about that more later. But 
The main point I want to I come from this passage is that Jesus is comforting us as he's comforting the disciples. And when he tells them, I'm going away, he's going to die on the cross. No, we go back to that picture. This one. Okay, so he came, his first coming. He lived on this earth for 33 years. He's going to die on the cross and take our sins on himself. He went into the grave for three days. He rose again. He lived on this earth for only about 40 days. And then he went back to his father. He, he ascended. He went back up to the father. And he says, I'm coming again to receive you to myself. So he's comforting us with those words. And we'll see that he, he will begin to tell the, the disciples, I'm not going to leave you as orphans and without a father. I'm going to go and then I'm going to send the spirit, the helper to be with you and to be in you. Okay, so let's just go back to the very beginning verse. John 14, 1. Now, can you go all the way back? Okay, so Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Okay, can I give her to you? Hopefully she'll let No, thank you. Okay, so notice he says, let not your hearts be troubled. And I want to encourage you, because um, I, I need to hear this myself, right? Because my heart is troubled sometimes. It's, uh, we worry. We Sometimes we, we forget about these promises of God. We forget about heaven. We forget about God's promises for us. And we, we think about what we're going through right now. And Jesus, even though he's the one that's getting ready to die, he's comforting the disciples. And he's comforting us. Don't be troubled. Okay? In, in light of our, our situation, again... Some of you, Sister Grace, just came in, and some of you maybe were not here when we we are being kicked out of our building right now. This is our last week. The landlord has uh, come and said, "You're out of here. I'm calling the police." Okay. So when when we hear those words, our hearts are troubled. We're like, "Oh no, what's going to happen? Where are we going to meet? What's going to? What are we going to do?" But let's let's believe what Jesus says okay don't don't be troubled God's gonna make a way this week we're gonna find a, a place to meet even if it's temporary we will we will meet next week we're, we're choosing to believe that right Amen. that we are we are God's church because we have his spirit and the, the church is the people so where God's people gather are where his church gathers so if we have to meet by the beach, if we meet in another building, if we use another church that possibly maybe in the afternoon, we are God's church. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. His spirit is in us if you trust Jesus. And he, and he, will, not, he will not abandon us. Okay? So stay, stay encouraged. Um, we, we are going to pray again and specifically just ask God to do a miracle. To, to give us something better than we have here. Because God can do that, right? He can give us a place that we, can, we don't have to just meet on Sundays. That we can have for during the week. God can do that. So let's pray that way and, and let's stay encouraged. That Jesus has prepared us a, a He's prepared us a home in heaven and He's going to prepare a church building for us to meet in. <laughs> Amen. 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 <coughs> okay, let's pray.